G'day Ziggy D here and welcome back for part 13 of the Path of Exile Survivor Guide. In the last episode we went and did a series of respec quests to get some points to finally go blood magic and uh, things are rocking now. There might be still a little bit of fine tuning to do but we're starting to look pretty tanky and we're able to spam our skills pretty much as much as we want now. Now, we also went and did the Fairgraves quest, which uh, gave us an amulet, but uh, the amulet turned out to be terrible, and we're still using our old level 16 blue amulet. There's going to be a few gearing upgrades we might need to do before we can finish this act, but uh, so far, things are looking pretty good. And, let's go continue on into the Imperial Gardens, and we're going to head towards the library to finish off a quest. You will notice we are joined today by Kiwi Bro. This guy was a... Uh, a a pet awarded to people who supported Border Supporters Pack in closed beta, I believe. So they are no longer available, but uh, he's pretty cool and pretty unique and pretty fun. And uh, Kiwi Bro has been with me through some pretty hard times, and I thought he might come with us through the uh, Path of Exile Survival Guide a little bit as well. Let me know what you feel, how you feel about Kiwi Bro, or maybe you would prefer uh, the Divine Rower Pet or something like that. But I'm a big fan of Kiwi Bro myself. So. To uh, get to the library, we're pretty much going to head to the northwest. I'm pretty sure it always spawns in the northwest. Just need to uh, get back into uh, shape with this character. I've been playing my uh, EK Scion a lot, so it's always a bit of adjustment switching over to characters. But uh, seems like we're going pretty well. We're not having any trouble supporting the life and our skills again. Remember that killing large packs of these guys with lightning arrows is very dangerous because they all tend to explode at once. So we need to watch out for that. So I'm just going to basically clear through here until we get to the entrance of the library. Okay, so here we are. Yeah, pretty much to the northwest. I'm pretty sure it always spawns here. We are in the Act 3X content, which is the newest content to Path of Exile, so I am slightly less familiar with this newer content than I am with previous content, but I still have a few tips to share with you guys, and I'll do my best to uh, show off the different challenges and things like that you guys will face. But, uh, and hopefully, over time, I'll be able to uh, provide you with more info in this. So these guys here are skeletal versions of the bears. They have hit pretty hard with physical damage, but otherwise, they're not too bad. I can probably show how hard they hit there. And, you know, pretty hard, pretty hard, but uh, they're very easy to kite as well. You do, however, need to watch out for these skeletal rowers. You guys will be pretty familiar with uh, skeletal row uh, rowers from before, and the skeletal rowers are just the same. They just uh, hit pretty hard as well in those charge attacks. Now, you'll actually notice that this guy here is a unique mob. Sometimes this will spawn at the entrance, sometimes I believe it will spawn a little bit further in. But uh, this guy is pretty easy. He hits very hard, since he's one of these bear mobs, but he's very easy to kite as a ranged character. Even as a melee character using something like cleave or ground slam, very easy to kite. But he's actually, he's just very easy to kill, as long as you don't stand there and face tank. And even, even saying that, we could probably stand here and just face tank him with good flask usage. So... We'll slowly work him down. He's got a fair bit of life. As you can see, that modifier under his name is indeed extra life. To save my health flask, I'm going to kite a little bit. Because then I can uh, minimize the amount of damage I actually have to take here. But yeah, the extra life affix means these guys just take a while to kill. Thankfully though, our frenzy does a decent amount of damage at this point. We do need a better bow, but our current one is not terrible. And anything good for us? Oh, we do need a new quiver, so hopefully this is rolled good. We should check boots as well, because if we find one with life and move speed, uh, that can be pretty good. We've got, uh, yeah, some armor and resist, nothing too useful. And nothing too useful here. Yeah, worse than our current one as well. So, no luck there, no luck there. We'll continue through, and I'll point out the different mobs and things like that. As, you, as usual, when uh, navigating through any sort of zone like this, it's kind of maze-like. You just want to pick one wall and stick to it and follow the way around. I'm pretty sure that's the easiest way to navigate through. I don't know of any other tricks. We do need to watch out for those row hits, though. Those guys hit pretty hard. Something you should especially be taking notice of when you're dealing with uh, physical hit mobs like this is uh, how your defensive capability is going. This percentage estimated physical damage reduction is reliant on your level. So we're level 34, we're in a level 33 zone. This is pretty accurate. However, armor scales poorly against big hits. Uh, I don't know if I've explained this before, but the way I like to uh, describe it is if you're wearing full plate mail and someone stabs you with a knife, it's going to be super effective. But if you're wearing full plate mail and someone hits you with a wrecking ball, it's not really going to help you too much. Same thing happens in Path of Exile, and I think it's pretty cool. Uh, now, those other guys you've just noticed here use Freeze Pulse. Now, these guys aren't too dangerous by themselves, but they will chill you and they will freeze you if they get a crit off. So, these guys want to try and freeze you, so try and avoid their attacks if you want. 
Uh, if you can, you just kind of want to move side to side or just try and kite them as best you can. Uh, the thing about Freeze Pulse is it does more damage the closer you are to them. So if I stay at, at maximum range, it's going to be okay. But if I uh, get up right in their face, they're going to do more damage to me. So uh, that's just kind of the mechanics of Freeze Pulse. And it's pretty interesting, but uh, something once you know the mechanics of, you can avoid a good portion of the damage there. Now these are larger skeletons as well as the bears hit pretty hard. So, uh, oh, Kiwi Bro's coming with us. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna group up these guys and AOE them down with my lightning arrow, as you can see here. Much more effective once you get a larger group. You know, trying to lightning arrow one or two mobs is gonna just take forever. But if I actually group them up, then they're gonna I'm gonna deal more damage overall. Of course, the danger of that is if you get yourself stuck against a wall in some situation like that. But this is the best time to be practicing now in normal difficulty because this is something you want to learn for later in the game. Okay, we've, uh, we've uh, encountered uh, Siosa, I believe it's pronounced here, which is the quest giver for this side quest area. Now, there's also a waypoint. It always spawns near him, so you want to make sure you grab this because we might actually be doing some farming in this zone a little bit later. Now, he gives us a quest to go and get four golden pages, and the entrance to this will always be beyond him. So we approached him from the south here. We want to continue to the north this way, and uh, this should one of these doors, either this one or this one over here, will lead to where we're headed to uh, get to this side quest. There'll be a few more mobs things like that. Oh, we need to watch out for rare, rare rowers. Very dangerous. A uh, good way of dealing with charge mobs in general, so shield charges, rowers, anything that charges like that, is to put some sort of wall in between you and them. If they have a straight line to you, they'll be able to charge. But if you put something in between you and them, uh, they're not going to be able to get their full charge off, and uh, you take more damage from their charge than you do from this single attack. So if I can, you know, get him to come around a corner, it's going to be much easier for me. Anything good for us? Transmutations could be helpful. We might have to roll some gear pretty soon. Okay, so I finally found the entrance. I should have stuck to my original strategy of always following the left wall, because then I would have came up in here and eventually found it, but instead I decided to uh, stop following the left wall and go to the right, and that screwed me up. So to get into the archives here, you want to click the loose candle. Oh, secret passage! And uh, this is where we're going to be able to find the golden pages. The strategy in here is going to be the same. We're going to stick to one wall and follow it around, because we want to locate four items, and they kind of just spawn randomly throughout this zone. Now, there's pretty much the same mobs in here, although we do have an interesting zone boss to face as well. Something I didn't point out in the last level is that in addition to these freeze palsy mobs and, uh, you know, skeletal rowers and skeletal bears and things like that, we've also just got an assortment of normal skeletons. Now, they're the normal melee skelet skeletons aren't much of a worry, but you need do need to be aware of the uh, magic casting ones here. So, uh, you got to watch out for those. This guy is a powerful crits version as well, so... See that extra projectile's powerful crits. I mean, it's going to be very hard to avoid his attacks, and they can potentially hit very hard. They won't always hit hard, but when they do hit hard, they'll hit very hard. And uh, powerful crits on a magical or an elemental-based attack means that you're more you're going to get frozen, burn, or shocked for a much longer period of time, or a much more powerful burn. So that's something to be very aware of is uh, the potential threat there. Oh, we've got a shrine in here, a domination shrine. Let's kill off this group here. You can really see the effectiveness of lightning arrow against a group there. You saw there was one left and it took me like three shots to kill him. But when they're in a group, they all pretty much get like one or two shot. And uh, let's actually talk about why this is. Lightning arrow is a pretty interesting skill. It fires at by its base one projectile that uh, goes out and hits an enemy. Now once it hits an enemy, it f has a secondary effect, it has a proc, it's essentially this lightning, uh, this lightning field around it. Now that actually, that lightning field is kind of interesting the way it works. Uh, what it actually does is, you know, when we hit a wall there, you can kind of see that there's an initial strike there. So that's the initial damage to the main target. Now it also zaps off and zaps up to two other enemies, so each projectile actually hits uh, three, up to three enemies. So when you get a large group and you're using something like less multiple projectiles that fires out three base lightning arrows, uh, each time you hit three mobs, they're going to go off and hit another three mobs. Now, the left arrow and the right arrow, say, you know, there's two skeletons standing here next to each other, and, uh, oh, I just got shocked. <laughs> there's two skeletons standing next to each other, and they both get hit by one arrow each. Each one of those is going to cause this proc that goes off and zaps the other one. So each one's actually getting hit uh, two times rather than just once each. So uh, they're getting hit, you know, that it kind of uh, amplifies, it multiplies out to uh, where you end up dealing a lot of damage. And this explains why you can have very low tooltip DPS, like 69 here compared to 116 on Frenzy, and still do a, a lot of damage just because of the way that ends up multiplying out. So we've got an impenetrable shrine there, and uh, hopefully you guys find that interesting. It's an interesting skill. And uh, it can be very effective when used against large groups for this reason. 
Oh, I actually said two additional targets. I went and checked the skill jam. I was actually wrong. It's actually three additional targets near the ori original targets. So when an arrow hits one mob, it they can then go out, arc out, and strike up to three other mobs. So that's, uh, you know, even better than what I was suggesting there. But uh, another interesting thing is on our current setup, I believe we're also running Pierce, which means that each arrow has a chance to go through that mob. Now, if it goes through this skeleton here and hits a skeleton behind him, the same thing's going to happen. You know, more skeletons are going to hit, hit more arcs are going to proc, more arcs are going to go out and hit more skeletons. And, uh, it's pretty cool the way it works, and then it starts to get even more interesting uh, when we later on, in, uh, towards late game, add in something like Chain that causes even more hits to occur. And uh, you get lots of st interesting stuff happen, and then it gets even more interesting when we add in the static blows passive later on, and each each one of these attacks, each one of these hits, has a chance to shock the enemies in the way these shocks can multiply out. And uh, pretty high damage potential, even though we're building a very tanky character here and not a very DPS-oriented character. Finally found one of the golden page. I swear I've searched half the zone and only found one so far. That means they've all spawned on this left side. A little bit unlucky there, as you can see. Look at all those zones, areas I've searched without finding one. But uh, as you can see, they're just here on the book stand. I'll probably bump into the other three pretty quickly now. I want to make sure we grab up each one of these fellas here. And uh, any scrolls of wisdom along the way from the scrubs racks. Alright, let's talk about another gameplay mechanic. I feel like I want to lay some extra gameplay mechanics on you guys uh, here. Uh, knowing these different like ways of playing, ways of controlling your character is super important. It's going to make you a better player overall. So, each time I attack, you're going to hear a keyboard click. That's kind of weird, because I'm using an attack that's on my right click. Now, the reason for that is I've gotten in the habit, I've developed the muscle memory of every time I attack with any sort of ranged attack, and even most melee attacks, I'm using Force Stand Still. Now by default this is bound to Shift, and uh, lots of action RPG players are happy with using this on Shift. Now I like to rebind this to Tab, so you can play around with your controls and find something su suitable for you. But basically every time I attack, I hold down Tab, which will be Shift for you guys by default, and uh, then, then click. Now what this does, whenever you hold down Tab, it forces your character to stand still. And that, you know, Force Stand Still makes a lot of sense there. Um, now the reason you want to do this is uh, if you click on a mob, say this skeleton here, and he's not in range, or he's a slightly he moves around a corner, my character is going to run off after them. Force stand still, make sure no matter what happens, no matter what this guy does, and maybe I can demonstrate this here even. We'll try and get him to go. Okay, I can probably just do it like this. If I right click here, I'll run it, run around, around, and shoot him. Now if there's enemies here in this room, I'm going to get myself killed doing that. If I hold shift and right click him. I'm going to just attack in his general direction, you know. I'm staying in the spot. I have complete control over my character. Force standstill is incredibly important. Now, as a secondary note, in Path of Exile and in a lot of action RPGs that are online, you know, Diablo 3 and all of that, it also pre prevents uh, a lot of desyncing issues. A lot of people who say they have a lot of desync or who say they're constantly desyncing are not using Force standstill. And that's because, you know, if you're constantly doing these little movements whenever you go to attack, uh, or especially with melee skills, if you're not force stand stilling, your character might be moving, or they might not. There'll be a disagreement between the server and between your client as to what is actually going on a lot of the time. However, if you're force stand stilling, there's no disagreement. There's no potential for disagreement. Both the server and your client know, okay, he was force stand stilling. There's no way he was moving. Therefore, there's no way he could be desyncing, unless you desync before then, of course. But uh, that's gonna it'll help prevent a lot of desync. That's mostly important with uh, melee attacks, because especially because of the way the melee targeting works. But uh, it so sometimes applies to ranged attacks as well when you're attacking mobs that are run around corners and things like that. So get into the habit of force stand stilling. Try using it on shift if that feels comfortable for you with your current control setup, or play around with your control setup and find something's more comfortable for you. As I said, I use a pretty weird control setup. Up. My force stand still is on tab. My ability skills are on one, two, three, four, five, and uh, well, and a mouse, key, a mouse key, <laughs> and uh, my potions are kind of all over the place in something that just works for me. <laughs> you guys will have to find out what works for you, or just use the default setup. The default setup is very good and is very much like every other action RPG you'll ever play. All right, now the last golden page should be up in the room ahead, but you'll notice. There's a guy throwing books at us, what the? This is uh, Trinian, Intellectus Prime, and uh, he's the zone boss for this zone here. Now, he looks pretty scary, You're like, you know, okay, he's throwing books at me, but uh, there's like all sorts of craziness, twi twisters and whirlwinds going on, but to be honest, this guy 
doesn't really hurt that much. This is a, a fireball attack that he's using, but it's skinned with books. I don't actually know if it deals fire damage or not, uh, but it, I know it is the fireball spell that he's using, so I don't know if it's been changed to use physical or not. But uh, either way, his attacks don't do much damage. The only thing you want to do is make sure you're not standing in those twisters. If you're standing in the twister and getting hit by his fireballs, you're going to start to take a bit more damage, but you're like... Look at this, I'm like not using any potions at all. Even in, like, I've never had this guy deal much damage, so I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it is the fact that he's fire, but even then, my fire resist is currently only 21, so that really can't be the reason. I just think he doesn't do much damage. So he's not a very scary guy. In fact, with life leech, <laughs> you know, the small amount of life leech we have, we can almost just stand here and face tank him, even standing in his tornadoes, eating all of his fireballs. We'll have to use the occasional potion there as we start to get worked down. But, uh, pretty easy stuff. Not too much to say about him. Now, hopefully... Oh, fourth golden page. Here we go. Now, in Merciless, you get a really cool skill gem reward for this one. I haven't actually looked up what the skill gem reward is for normal difficulty, but no doubt it'll be something we can use. If not, it'll be just something we can stash and maybe use later. So you just want to head straight back to the library. Hopefully the entrance is nice and close for you like it was for me. And we're going to want to uh, head over to that same guy who gave us the quest, which, if I can remember my way back, should just be over this way. Okay, so here we go. Siosa, give us our reward. We have a skill gem reward. Cast when stunned is a pretty nice defensive uh, support gem. It allows you to set up some things to happen automatically whenever you're stunned. Now, it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. So that's a potential yes. Now, we've also got the new purity spell, uh, auras. Now, like I've talked about in the past, uh, we're switching around different uh, rings to change our resist. We can do a very similar thing with these purity support gems. However, on our character, we're blood magic, so... We're probably not really going to be taking advantage of this. We potentially could if we grab the uh, talent behind Blood Magic on the passive tree to reduce the amount of life they reserve if we're really, really struggling for one resist. However, 20% at level 1 and uh, even a few more percent as it levels up isn't a big deal. Pretty easy to sort out our resists with just gear, so I'm going to go for that. But these ha also have some niche and game uses, but these are a new addition to the game and I think they're pretty cool. Now we have Punishment is a pretty useless aura for us. Devouring Totem is an okay sort of buff to use. Curse on Hits not really going to be applicable for our character too much. Temporal Chains is a fantastic defensive curse and that's one I'm seriously going to consider. And we have Elemental Hit, which is a good single target attack if you're a fast-hitting elemental-based bow user, uh, which uh, we're not exactly. We're more going for the physical route, so it's not great for us. That's why we prefer Frenzy as a very physical-oriented skill. So it's a choice between Cast When Stunned or uh, the uh, Temporal Chains, I think. I think Temporal Chains is going to be the way to go. It's a fantastic curse to use. We don't have a defensive curse just yet, so maybe we'll go for that. Cast When Stunned would be nice, but we don't have any uh, anything to really hook it up with yet. We don't have Molten Shell. We don't have Enduring Cry or anything like that yet, Th which those are skills we could potentially get. But let's go ahead and do this. So I'm going to put my defensive curse on here, Temporal Chains, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to show you that off to you guys pretty soon. But first... We're up to the point now where we're going to be heading to fight the final boss of Act 3. Now the zones leading up to the final boss, Dominus of Act 3, are very dangerous. Dominus himself is also terrifying and also very dangerous. In normal, with pretty good life on your gear and uh, good resist, you can almost face tank him, but it's still a very difficult and scary fight. What we want to do for sure though is try and get as close to possible as capping out all of our resists is going to involve a little bit of tinkering. Currently we have 21% fire resist. I'm not happy with that, because there's one very scary fire guy in there as well that I want to be able to deal with better. 75 cold is fantastic, and 60 lightning resist is pretty livable. What we can potentially do is drop some cold resist and get more fire resist. So, this is a cold and lightning ring with extra cold. That brings us down to 46%. Maybe, maybe there's something we can do to boost our... Uh, fire a bit more. Potentially rolling this ring here. Now this is a fire resist ring with life. What does that bring us up to? 50, 46, 46. Not great. I would like them all to be a little bit higher. What about if we roll this fella here and see what... Ooh, chaos resist. Wow. That's actually very rare. <laughs> but uh, let's let's augment this and see what we get. There's not... There is some chaos damage in here, so this isn't going to be terrible. 4 to, four to 8 cold damage. Uh, actually, I'm not too against this. So this brings us up to 59, which is pretty livable, 46, which is a little bit low, and fire resist, which is still 
uh, 34 fire resist, which is still quite low. So this is, we're going to try and get some more resists if possible. Helmet's good. Gloves are fantastic. Boots are still pretty good. It's going to be hard to get an upgrade for those. Uh, this needs replacing. Our amulet needs replacing. And our bow would like an upgrade as well, but not too much we can do for that yet. Uh, this uh, ring's still very strong as well. A belt has nice life, but could do with some resist potentially. But I don't know. I don't like our chances of getting a resist belt. So let's see what we can do here. Uh, we're good for rings. Getting a uh, quiver might be good. We might even be able to craft ourselves a quiver. We are running a little bit low on things like augments and stuff. Let's see if I can get an augment from this maybe. If I ID it. Yeah, well, that's a that's not a bad chest. But we're going to sell that because it's not useful for us. <laughs> so, we'll see if... Uh, We'll see if Hagen has a quiver here. Actually, what are we what are we looking like in terms of currency? We have some chance orbs. We could YOLO gamble on it. We don't have any transmutes. Okay, here's my plan. I'm almost to level 35. What I'm going to do is go farm library. Do, you know, one run in there and see if we get any improved loot drops at all. I'll also be keeping an eye out for any white quivers that I can get or any white amulets even. And I'll also be picking up some magic items to get some more transmutes because we're pretty low on those fellas. I don't pick up and sell too many magic items, but every now and then it's good to do. Now, you could farm docks if you wanted to, and docks would be pretty fast as well, but library is also a fantastic farming zone, and we weren't really struggling in here at all. What we actually want to do, though, is go back to town and create a new instance. Now, I have showed this before, but in case you guys missed it, you want to control click on library there to create a new instance by clicking on new there. So, if you want to farm a uh, library, if you're feeling you're not too confident about the next fight, and it is scary, then uh, you want to farm a bit of library, just run back and forth using either of the doorways to uh, reset the zone. And, uh, you know, you can go to like level 36, level 37, even, you could even go all the way to 40, but I don't think that's necessary. We're going to go to level 35, maybe a little bit beyond, and see if we get any drops. I'll probably do like maybe two or three runs through here. Oh, a rare death bow. This has potential. I would love a, a death bow with attack speed on it. As I said before, the death bow has one of the slowest attack speeds on a bow. 1.10 and uh, it's pretty bad. Oh, nice attack speed roll. But does it have enough damage? 1 to 4 fire is terrible. 1 to 25 lightning is not great. We have a very high fizz roll on our current one. Oh, I don't think it's going to be enough damage. That lightning roll doesn't really, doesn't really help it out too much. And uh, we kind of need the 4 link. I don't think it's going to happen. Let's judge it based on Frenzy DPS to see whether it's worth trying to go for another link. But uh, oh, it's about the same, actually. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. So we might actually be able to get it another full link somehow pretty soon. So we'll hang on to that bow because uh, that increased attack speed is going to make us much more mobile in the upcoming fight. Pretty nice stuff. Now, you notice we also have a level. So I'm just going to be going, working my way down to Golden Spot like I was before. And uh, if we were desperate to get more resist, we could continue our way down, level up a few more times, and get Diamond Flesh. And I recommend doing that if you're having a lot of trouble getting enough resistances on your gear. You know, and if you want to play it a bit more safer, getting up to 60 to 75 or uh, resist on all your resistances, it's going to help out a lot in the upcoming fights. Ah, so I just checked the vendor and uh, found out that the Grove Bow base bow type is available from level 35, which we just hit. This would be optimal. If we got one of these bows now, it would be great. Now, there are some in here, three links like this that we could purchase. And uh, straight up, you know, like 13 to 38, the damage is, you know, a bit lower than the death bow. But um, 1.55 attacks per second, much easier to move around, much easier to attack. Higher, higher overall DPS if we can roll it okay. Now... We would have to roll it okay to be able to do so. We could potentially craft a blue one of these guys. However, we still kind of need a link. We could potentially drop Pierce on Lightning Arrow. That's definitely not crucial at this point in the game. So that actually might be worth it. It's already got the right color arrangement. We're still a little bit short on transmutations. So I'm going to do another farming run and farm up another transmutation. And I won't level in that time, so I'll be able to uh, come back and uh, do that. Okay, so we're going to be able to do a limited amount of crafting, but we have a few, quite a few things we could do, actually. I'm going to go ahead and purchase the Grove Bow. Hopefully we can manage to roll it well. It would be nice, but uh, our fallback is to use, uh, like, the Death Bow, and mm, we're pretty short on links. We'll figure something out. We'll figure something out. We don't really need any of these ones here. We, oh, we actually already had a Grove Bow, but it's only one link, so this is all right to get still. So... We have uh, one orb of transmutation and a few things I'd like to use it on. An onyx amulet would, would be good to use it on. We could potentially get some life and resist. Uh, it would be nice to use it on the rugged quiver. And also the bow. 
So thankfully I have some orb of chance. You know, you can save up your orb of chances, but I, I don't mind doing a bit of crafting here since we're going self-found. Going to uh, use it on the Onyx amulet, and uh, that, there goes our orb of chances. And uh, we got a 6 to 12 Fizz, 3 life gained on kill on that one is actually pretty good. It is an upgrade from our current one, so let's go ahead and put that on there. And we will craft our Rugged Quiver here. Now that's pretty bad. Now, what do we want to try and roll? Do we want to try and roll the Quiver more or the Bow more? Karabaru Bow is okay. Maybe we should try and roll the Quiver more, to be honest. It would be fun rolling a nice Bow here, but... uh. Probably rolling a quiver is going to be a bit more safer. So we have a life one here. Uh, we don't currently have any life. That would be nice. But I'd love to get some life resist if possible. Uh, let's see. That's a that's a prefix there. Damage is a prefix. So that overrides any life. Ah, damn. No life. And we're out of crafting materials. Now, is this better than our current one? Crit strike chance? No, our other one is currently better. So, no. Not much luck there. We got a new amulet and that's about it. We're just going to have to see if we can get anything progressing forwards. But uh, I'm, I'm okay. You guys can hang out and farm a little bit longer if you want to increase your resists a bit more. I'm going to go ahead and sell all these guys here. I don't need any of this. I'm not going to worry about this bow because I don't have another 3 link at the moment to use. Even though it is about the same. A slight upgrade in terms of attack speed. Now we can sell a few more things here and then we'll continue on. Okay, so we're going to take the waypoint from the Imperial Gardens and this time head to kind of the north-northeast. Uh, depending on where things spawn exactly, it should be somewhere in that direction. So just off in this way. Uh, I'm not going to level Conversion Trap because I might not be able to use it if I uh, lose a bit of int somewhere along the line. But I will show off Temporal Chains before we move on too much. Oh, there's a rock there. How unfortunate. Because uh, Temporal Chains is a really nice curse. Here we go, perfect guy. You'll notice he is, uh, m these guys are much slower now when cursed with Temporal Chains, and that is essentially all it does, is it just slows them down a great deal. This means they're attacking you less, means it's easy to kite them, and uh, all that good jazz here. Oh, we've actually encountered the zone boss in here. I don't think I showed him off before, so I want to, want to take this opportunity to show him off, but first I'm just going to kill off the rest of these mobs before we actually show the zone bo boss himself off. Okay, so the zone boss is in here. There he is in the middle. He's one of these cool beasts here. There's a ton of them in there, so we're going to have to try and kill a few of these guys off. You'll notice, however, he's using Ice Spear. Now, we've learned about Ice Spear before from Hail Rake and Mervail, and uh, basically, at far range, those have a very high chance of crit and freezing you, so you, that's something you want to watch out for. I should be using my single target attack on a single target. <laughs> But uh, I'll try and temp change this guy so we can sew him off. This guy is extremely dangerous. He does a ton of damage. He also reflects uh, damage as well. So uh, it's not too bad at this point. But once we get higher DPS, it's going to be a big deal. Uh, I don't believe it's a reflect aura. I think it's just that he himself reflects death. Uh, reflex. And also, he's, he's on one of these Quill Fiend kind of, uh, these Porcupine mobs here, which, uh, they're kind of inherently dangerous as well, so he's a pretty scary guy. As you can see, though, we have a pretty good time just, uh, circle kiting around him. Using Temp Chains slows him down a lot, as you can see, and that makes it very helpful. And that's actually a good point about Temp Chains. It works really well on single targets that you want to try and, that you can actually avoid their attacks, I should say. Enfeeble is a better defensive curse overall, I would say. It uh, d reduces the amount of damage you take by a significant point. However, against something like this, where we can avoid the attack, Temp Chains makes it much easier to avoid him. So, I'll just continue pretty much doing exactly what I'm doing, circle kiting him down, Temp Chainsing him whenever that wears off, and uh, continue until we take him out. And there we go. Any sick loots? Ah, uh, there's a giant life flask. That's our current tier. We kind of... I wouldn't mind a staunching giant life flask because there's going to be a nasty bleed effect soon that we can lose. Uh, our current ones are all rolled pretty well. Cautious, we've got Dispelled, Frozen, Chilled there is pretty handy. So uh, this one's not going to be too helpful for us. Okay, here we go. The Scepter of God. Now you'll notice there's a locked door here. We have this key from Piety. Hopefully you picked it up when you killed Piety. If not, you're going to have to go back and kill Piety again. But we can use this key on the locked door here to get into the actual Scepter of God. Now, we're, I'm pretty sure it's on this next level. There's about five levels in here. I haven't actually counted them before, but there's quite a few levels. But we also want to keep an eye out for a waypoint, which is on one of the earlier levels. Okay, so this is a good time to point out the new mobs. As we can see here, we have these guys using these lightning projectiles. This is kind of like lightning trap, except for they're not actually throwing lightning traps. They themselves are the lightning traps. Yes, pretty freaky. 
But these guys are pretty dangerous. The lightning has a chance to shock you, and does a fair bit of damage itself. You'll notice that they also sometimes cast a bubble around them. You can see this guy's bubbled out over here. That bubble is an anti-ranged attack bubble. Once that's up, any ranged projectile will not hurt them at all. You have to get within the bubble to be able to actually damage them. So I can I can sit here and shoot this guy all day, and he'll take no damage while that bubble's up. So we have to get in here. We have to get in and face tank him. And uh, this is kind of, you know, if there's other mobs standing in the bubble, they won't take any damage at all either. Now, the good thing about these guys is the bubble only lasts a, du a set duration. It's uh, not too long, so you can kind of wait for the bubbles to disappear. Then kill them from ranged if you want. But uh, otherwise, you need to get right, right up in there. It's not like on Nemesis where uh, rares that spawn with a bubble like this. Uh, we'll always have it, and you have to get in there and face tank. You can weigh a little bit and uh, attack once they actually lose that bubble. So other than that, you'll see some uh, statues in here. These are exactly the same as all the statues we've faced. We've got some basic melee ones and some, uh, some bow ones that use ice shot as well. All right, here's the next mob. These guys are so annoying, and they hurt a lot too. Firstly, they Leap Slam. Leap Slam itself does quite a bit of damage, so I'll see if I can get hit by one of these guys for you. Yep, that does a lot of damage. <laughs> I got hit by an ice shot at the same time, but still does quite a lot of damage. They also use Arctic Breath, which is actually a very dangerous uh, cold spell, obviously dealing cold damage there. Uh, it hits really hard. It hits like a, a truck. But it also leaves this ground effect here that will slow you. You know, we've encountered that before, and uh, as you see, as I get into the fresh stuff there, it, it slows me down a bit. So getting hit and pushed by, back by that, taking a bit of damage, you know, and uh, getting stuck in the slow is pretty dangerous. So you kind of want to keep mobile to uh, avoid those guys' leap slams. Uh, usually against leap slammers, I would suggest, you know, staying still and face taking them so they don't leap slam around. But those guys, it doesn't seem to work too well for, especially because they cast Arctic Breath as well. So you kind of just want to keep mobile and try and avoid their attacks as much as possible and uh, do a combination of circle strafing and normal strafing to take them out. Alright, I knew the last mob would be in here as well and I wanted to show it off. You'll see these kind of like, you know, feathery peacock creatures here. These guys are the, the chimer chimerals? Chimerals, yeah, croaking chimerals. These guys are kind of like cool fiends as well. They shoot out a bunch of spines from their tail. It's a rapid physical damage projectile attack, so it deals lots of small damage. Things like Arctic Armor are fantastic against it, and uh, uh, having a high amount of armor helps out as well. But uh, it also has a secondary effect. It has suppressing Fire, you'll see under this name. This is unique to these guys, but I'll see if I can get him to cast it on me to show what that does. Come on, suppressing Fire. Okay, so he hit us with a few of it. There we go, we took a full volley. When you take a full volley, your spells and ranged attacks are suppressed, causing them to fire and cast at a slower rate. So you'll notice that once we uh, take that... I'm kind of running low on life, but hopefully I can show this off. Come on. Hit me. There we go. Okay. Ugh! Super slow attacks. Yeah, I'm running a bit low on life trying to demonstrate here things for, for you guys. But uh, yeah, that slows you down. So basically, you just want to circle straight around those guys to avoid their projectile attacks as much as possible. Now, I just want to double check to make sure that the waypoint isn't in this zone for you guys. And I'm going to have to use my uh, lightning arrow there to try and heal up. Oh, I'm taking a lot of damage. Nah, I'm okay. <laughs> lightning, life gain on hit on lightning arrow uh, pulls through again. Pretty strong stuff. Oh, now that I think about it, the waypoint's actually in the upper scepter of God, so we're not there yet. We can continue up. <laughs> so same deal each level. There's multiple levels, you know, just these combinations of mobs. Make sure you're not getting shock, shock stacked and suppressed and, you know, get inside the bubbles if you need to or play, you know, play it safe and wait until the bubbles drop to kill off those guys. Same deal, just uh, watch out for nasty combinations of the mobs like getting suppressed and not being able to attack fast enough to keep your life up, things like that. Okay, we've encountered the uh, the zone boss, Kali Kaligar, Kaligar the zone boss here. A, uh, another one of these lightning trapper mobs, but he actually throws traps, and uh, he's super frightening. I, I swear, I had, I've had countless near rips to this guy, and the first time running through here on normal and uh, Nemesis difficult, in Nemesis League, uh, had a very, very close call with him. And uh, managed to survive, only to uh, die to Dominus shortly after. So <laughs> this is a pretty, pretty dangerous and scary zone. But uh, hopefully I'll kill off these guys and be able to show you him in a bit more detail. Because, uh, you know, knowledge is power in Path of Exile. Okay, here he is. So as you can see, he's one of the, you know, same base mobs there, but actually throws multi-traps out. So you'll, you'll notice he's throwing, you know, more than one of each trap each time. So you can avoid the traps by staying to the sides, but whoa, there they go. When they go off, you're going to take a lot of damage. So just try and keep your distance and uh, draw him away from his traps is probably the best strategy to deal with him. And uh, it's just going to have to involve some very careful play. 
And uh, hopefully your lightning resist is up to, <laughs> up to spec. If I don't have any lightning resist rings at the moment, but if I had one, I'd probably put it on actually just for this fight to uh, up my lightning resist a bit more. Now one interesting thing to note, I've actually kind of tested this out on the map variant of this guy, is if you're in a, on a higher or lower level than him to where he's placed the traps. So if I'm down here, uh, the traps are kind of going to go over your head, or if I'm up here, they're going to go, uh, they're going to hit the wall and not come all the way up. So down the stairs and things like that are going to hit me, but I should be able to hide behind things like this. Though I'm, I'm not 100% confident on being on a lower level, but being on a higher level definitely works. So if I can draw him down onto the low ground, and uh, without dying, and then get up on the high ground myself, we might actually be in a better position. However, my life is very low and I don't have any flasks yet, so time for a refresh. Let's see if I could fight him from the high ground here. Get a bit of high ground advantage. Oh, there's a superior flask, we should pick that up. Ah, uh, there he is. No, there's another one. But uh, he's, a tough, he's a tough guy to fight. Check him out, I've only taken his health down a little bit, and uh, pretty scary stuff, pretty difficult. Look at all those lightning traps go off, it's insane. So unlike normal traps, he has the mod where the traps are eventually going to explode. He must be using a Sunblast Unique Belt, I believe, is the one that does that. But uh, yeah, that means you want to just be away from the area where he's laid his traps, because it's not just about you walking on them, you actually need to uh, not be there when they go off as well. So the fact that he's with these blues as well is very, very painful. Oh, finally. That was a tough fight. Hey, some rare boots, they could actually be good. So, after a long and intense ordeal with Fidelitas, my recommendation for that particular unique boss is to avoid him. <laughs> Unless you like giving yourself a challenge, I highly recommend just avoiding him. Now we're to the level where we can take Golem's blood. Oh no! Oops, accidentally old tabbed and lost my recording. But we're back. Hopefully that, uh, that edits together, hopefully, pretty nicely. But uh, let's move on. I'm sick of fight. I'm sick of the Fidelitas fight. I'm getting exhausted before I'm even too Dominus. So uh, <laughs> it's gonna be a tough fight up ahead. Okay, I believe it's the third level that I've found the waypoint on. So make sure you grab that.